Hey guys, welcome back to another lecture video for Chem 104. In this lecture video, we are going to discuss uh, geometric isomers. So we're going to learn what geometric isomers are, how to identify them um, or classify them, and we're going to learn how to draw organic compounds with geometric isomers, and we're, we're also going to uh, learn how to name organic compounds that have geometric isomers. So let's go ahead and start. Um, and hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will understand this uh, chemistry joke that uh, I kind of made up. All right, so let's go ahead and start. First thing that we need to, to cover is its definition. Um, so remember that there are three subcategories of isomers are structural or constitutional isomers, there's geometric isomers, and there's also enantiomers. And so all isomers will have the same chemical formula. However, what distinguishes a structural isomer or a constitutional isomer from a geometric isomer is that the geometric isomer focuses on how the atoms or groups of compounds are arranged around a double bond. And so the double bond, let me highlight that real quick, is going to be our point of focus for geometric isomers. And so um, to, to understand why double bonds get special treatment, we have to think about how the how these, these atoms that are covalently bonded twice, uh, in other words, if two, car two consecutive carbon atoms have a double bond, we need to understand how they can rotate with respect to each other. Um, to better understand why we have to talk about double bonds in geometric isomers. And so if you take a look at uh, the item I'm kind of drawing right now, <clears throat> so just imagine that these two carbons are like marshmallows, right? I think I've kind of gone over this example in a previous lecture video, but that's okay. And so let's just say that here we have two marshmallows and uh, they're representative of these two carbons. And you, can get, you guys can do this at home as well. And what you wanna do is you know, stick a toothpick uh, two toothpicks to represent a double bond um, inside those two marshmallows. Um, and so what you want to do next is try to rotate this uh, marshmallow with respect to, to the other. So one goes clockwise, one goes counterclockwise. And if you guys don't have marshmallows and toothpicks at home, that's okay. You guys can just kind of like imagine... Um, uh, moving like your eraser or the, the tip of your pencil one way versus another. If you have like two pencils, that's kind of connected. And so um, if you're trying to rotate, you know, one marshmallow one way and the other marshmallow the other way with a double bond, because there are two bonds, it locks the conformation in that position. So in other words, there is no rotation and if there is a rotation, it's very slight. Okay. So there's very there's no or very slight rotation around the double bond. So what that tells us is that the position of these marshmallows are fixed. And if the position of these marshmallows are fixed, and if we translate that to you know, an organic chemical compound, then um, the positions of, for example, an attachment will also be fixed. In other words, you guys cannot rotate these um, marshmallows or the attachments that, that's found on those carbons that's sharing a double bond. And because those positions are fixed, it creates 
what is known as a geometric isomer. Okay. And so it, it's this reason that there's no rotation around the double bond that we have to consider the geometry of double bonds. And if they have different geometries, then they are isomers of each other. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at these two examples to better understand uh, the, the spatial, um, the, the geometric arrangement of this. So once again, since there is no rotation around the double bond, oops, okay. same here, there's no rotation. Could this molecule ever overlap this molecule? In other words, if you were to pick the molecule on the, the bottom, the one that, the one that I'm pointing to with the arrow, if you guys can pick it up, lift it, and overlap it with the molecule at the top, do all of the attachments or the substituents line up? And the answer is no. Um, and so you, if you line up these two compounds, your A's will not line up. Your B's will line up, but your A's won't line up. Now, if you guys had a single bond, okay, then there is a rotation. And if you're trying to line up this, if you're trying to um, overlap both these molecules, because you can rotate this bond for a single bond, then this uh, item right here, let me do it with a pointer, so this guy right here will flip up. And so if, you have, if rotation is possible, this A compound, whatever it is, it's, it can flip, it can rotate up. And then once it's rotated up, this whole compound can then be overlapped to this compound. And that's, that's possible if you have a single bond. But if you guys have a double bond, okay, there is no rotation. And so therefore, the positions of this substance and this substance is fixed, such that when you overlap these two together, they will never overlap. Um, and this poses or this creates isomerism. Okay, specifically, geometric isomerism. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. And so there are two types of geometric isomers. Uh, there's something that's called cis and something called trans. If you guys um, look up some stuff on the, on the internet, uh, you guys might come across E and Z. We will not cover E and Z in this semester of, or, of, of organic chemistry. Uh, I, I will leave that for the full year of organic chemistry. This is just a Chem 104 class. All right, so um, uh, let's talk about these, these two different types of geometric isomers called cis and trans. And um, long story short, if I cut a plane across the carbon, like this. Notice that uh, the A and B are on the same side. And so if your, your groups are on the same side, whatever they are, then this would refer, this would be referred to as the cis isomer. And if they're on opposite sides, then this would be trans. Now, what I'm missing here, okay, so I'm going to erase some of this stuff, this plane that I drew. <clears throat> now, if you guys recall, a carbon must have four covalent bonds. Two of those covalent bonds form the double bond between those two carbons. And uh, one of the bonds, one of the covalent bonds is attached to 
another carbon group, which is represented by A or B. And so that last covalent bond that's required so that these carbons have a full octet is going to be a hydrogen. And so sometimes figuring out where the hydrogens are with, uh, in the double bond with respect to each other is a much uh, better or, or uh, simple um, identifier as to whether or not if it's cis or trans. And so if it's cis, your hydrogens will be on the same side. If it's trans, your hydrogens are going to be on opposite sides. Okay, so the, the application of cis and trans is still the same. However, um, if you want to refer it to as like the alkyl groups, which is going to be in pink, you guys can do it that way. Or if you do it through hydrogen, which is highlighted in yellow, you guys can define cis and trans that way. Um, and so just choose one uh, focal point. Um, I just, for me, I personally use hydrogen as my focal point to determine if it's cis and trans. There's one thing that you guys do need to note. Um, notice that if I cut my plane vertically, um, both of the hydrogens are on opposite sides of each other if I cut a plane around the vertical. Okay. Now, if you guys are looking some stuff up, and uh oh what's going on? Um, and if you guys come across like E or Z or something like that, um, then that's out of the scope for this class. Okay. And so in short, there are two things that you guys need to remember, uh, one, cis and trans. Number two, um, cis is when the hydrogens are on the same side if you cut the plane horizontally. Okay. So if you guys cut the plane horizontally, your hydrogens are on the same side of their cis your hydrogens will be on opposite side of their trans. Another thing that you guys need to remember is that those hydrogens must be, must not be on the same carbon in that double bond. And so for example, if you have like a carbon that looks like this, okay, where your hydrogens are here, and then this is A, and then this is B, or something like that. Um, because both of these are technically on the same side, if you cut the plane along the vertical, then um, you won't have any cis or trans, okay? So there's no cis, no trans, no geometric isomer here. Uh, the reason why is because if you take that same molecule, And if you just switch the positions of A and B, okay. so notice that if you have a, something that looks like this, um, if you flip the bottom, you can overlap it with the top, right? So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like your hands. Right, and so if you guys flip your hand, your thumbs will kind of match. And so here in this case, you guys do not have, there's no geometric isomer. Okay. Because your hydrogens are on the same side, therefore your alkyl groups will also be on the same side. And if you have these two molecules uh, drawn separately, and if the hydrogens are on the same side, well, you can go ahead and flip one of the molecules such that it'll overlap with the other. And if it completely overlaps with each other, 
then there's no geometric isomer. So that's only possible if your hydrogens, so a geometric isomer is only possible if your hydrogens or your alkyl groups are on opposite sides of each other around the vertical. Right? So if you draw a vertical plane, you'll see that both the alkyl groups and the hydrogens are all on opposite sides in both scenarios. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to um, draw them. And so by drawing them, we can hopefully understand how uh, these cis and trans organic compounds look like. And I'm going to go ahead and refer back to my lecture note, my PowerPoint. All right, so the first thing that we're going to draw is cis-2-hexene. Um, so I gave you guys the IUPAC name in hopes that you guys can see how uh, cis and trans is incorporated into how we name organic compounds or um, so far that we've learned. And uh, let's see here. So let's, let's go ahead and break this down so we can draw this compound. So hex is telling me that I have a six carbon compound, and this ENE is telling me that I have a double bond. And remember, geometric isomers really only occur, could, could occur, if you have a double bond. Okay. In this case, there will be a geometric isomer because it's telling us the relationship. It's telling us that it needs to be cis. And so let's just draw the structure first. And so here, if I have hexene, I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And it's telling me that on the second carbon, I have my double bond. So if this is one, this is two. So starting from the second carbon, I will have a double bond. This is three, this is four, this is five, this is six, okay? Now the last item is that it's telling us um, this molecule needs to have a cis relationship uh, around the double bond. And for us to understand how to draw the cis form, we need to go ahead and draw in our hydrogens. And so if you guys are looking at this carbon, it currently has one, two, three covalent bonds. And so therefore it has one more hydrogen um, attached to it that's not shown. And the same can be said with this other carbon at the bottom. Okay. And so if you guys look at the position uh, you might have to tilt your head to the right, slightly to the right. Um, so are these hydrogens on the same side? If you cut a plane, I'll do this in a different color, around the horizontal. So you guys might have to tilt your head for this. So if you slightly tilt your head to the right, notice that the hydrogens are on opposite sides of each other. And so what we've actually drawn is not cis, we've drawn trans. And so for me to draw cis, I have to change my compound. And so since I know that carbon two, and so my carbon two uh, the, will start my double bond, right? <clears throat> so that means there's going to be a carbon there's gonna be a double bond between carbon two and carbon three. Okay, and I actually will just draw it as a skeletal structure. Okay. And since there's a double bond between them, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in that double bond. Now remember, we're trying to 
determine if the molecule is cis. Or we're trying to determine, we're trying to draw that the molecule has a cis formation. So what that's telling us is that those hydrogens needs to be on the same side. So it doesn't matter if you put the hydrogens up or if you put those hydrogens down. Just as long as they're on the same side if you cut across the horizontal. And so if this is carbon 2, carbon 3, and if I position my hydrogen so that they're at the bottom, then that means carbon 1 needs to go at the top. And so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So carbon 4 also needs to go at the top. Now notice that carbon 4 is connected to carbon 5 and 6. So I just need to continue drawing that structure. And so now that I have my draft, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase some things. I'm going to erase the, the, the numbers, and I'm going to erase the hydrogens because they're typically not shown in my organic, in my skeletal structure. And so this would be the proper way to depict cis-2-hexene. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we have a double bond starting at carbon number two. All right. So let's go ahead and, and do the next one. We have trans one bromo two chloroethene. So here um, I have eth. Eth means it's two carbons. So notice that there's no number uh, before eth. And the reason why is because there's only one way to draw a double bond. That's the E and E, if there's only two carbons. And so it's just simply like this, right? So this is ethene. And so this is telling us that these substituents, one bromo and two chloro, are trans to each other. And so if I were to put my bromine at the top, if I want to depict something that's trans with respect to the double bond, then my chlorine needs to be at the bottom. Now if I just draw in my hydrogen so that I'm depicting the full octet for my carbon, notice that the position of the hydrogens are also trans. So it's not necessary for you guys to draw those hydrogens. Um, sometimes I like to draw them in, sometimes I don't. And so if we ignore those hydrogens, uh, this would be the structure for trans one bromo two chloroethene. Okay. So remember eth is two carbons, ene is a double bond, and there's only really one way to draw a double bond between two carbons. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next compound. So here we have trans 1,2-difluoroethene. And so once again, I see eth, that means two carbons. And then ene means double bond. Um, so I have a trans 1, 2 difluoro. So in other words, my fluoro or my fluorines are trans. So I can go ahead and put in the fluorines opposite to each other around the horizontal. And just to make sure I'm drawing it correctly, I can go ahead and draw in my hydrogens. And if I were to cut the plane around the horizontal, Notice that my hydrogens are opposite to each other if I put my fluorines opposite to each other. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to go ahead and clean up my work. Oops. And this would be an example of 
trans 1, 2 difluoroethene. Now, if you guys drew your fluorines like this, that's still trans, right? It's still opposite of each other. So that's also the correct. What's not correct is if you guys drew your oops, compounds like this. So this is not trans at all, okay? Um, they are on opposite sides, yes, but they're on the same side around the, the vertical, right? And so if you guys kind of just draw a grid, those fluorines must be on opposite sides of the grid for it to be trans. Going back up here, if you draw a grid where the double bond is at, notice that your group, your substituents, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the rest of the alkyl groups are on uh, the opposite side around the, the vertical, um, yet they're on the same side around the horizontal, so that's cis. All right, so the last example um, that we're going to do is cis-4-octene. And so octene means that we have eight, um, uh, eight carbons. And we have a double bond on the fourth position of that carbon. And so since this is cis, I can go ahead and just draw a line um, to pick my double bond. And I'm just going to make sure that my hydrogens are on the same side. Once again, it doesn't matter if your hydrogens are at the top or at the bottom. Uh, just make sure that they're on the same side with respect to the imaginary um, horizontal line. All right, so um, if, this is, if this is four, right, so four octene, then this must be carbon four, then this must be carbon five. That means carbon six is gonna be up here, carbon seven is gonna be down here, and then carbon eight will be up here, okay? Um, very similar, if I backtrack, carbon three will be up here, carbon two will be down here, carbon one will be down here. Okay. And so um, the reason why I'm drawing my organic structure just a little bit different is because the problem is telling me that I want cis. I want everything to be on the same side. Or I'm sorry, I want my hydrogens to be on the same side with respect to the horizontal imaginary line. And so if I erase all the th items that I'm not supposed to have in a skeletal structure, um, I get an organic compound that simply looks like this. So this would be cis four octene. Okay. <clears throat> so hopefully by going through these four examples, you guys um, <clears throat> understand how to draw cis and trans. And so the last item that we're going to do today is uh, we are going to learn how to name organic compounds using cis and trans. And so I'm gonna go back to my notebook and we're gonna do several examples. Um, and so let's go ahead and, uh, oops, let's go ahead and start. All right, so let's start very simple. So we have this organic compound. Um, notice that there's no substituents. There's only a double bond. And the way that we drew, the, the way that I drew this organic compound is very specific with respect to the geometric isomerism 
of this molecule. And so if you kind of draw in your invisible hydrogens, right, so we have one, two, three, four bonds, one, two, three, four bonds. And so we're fulfilling the octet rule for both of those carbons. Um, notice that the hydrogens are on the same side. And so this is telling me that this compound is gonna be cis in isomerism. And so um, next, we're going to count the number of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So since, since I have eight carbons, I know that my compound is going to be oct. And since I have the presence of a double bond, it's going to be octene. So the next thing I need to do is describe the position of octene, or the position of the double bond in octene. And you want to make sure that the double bond has the lowest carbon number when you're numbering your carbons. And so uh, if you go from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, here your double bond will start at carbon number three. Now, if you go in reverse, you have one, two, three, four, five. Your carbon, your double bond will start at carbon number five. And so in terms of the numbering system for this molecule, it's gonna be from left to right. So now that we know our numbering system, we're simply going to put in three uh, in front of three dash in front of octene to describe that there's a double bond starting on the third carbon. Um, since there's no substituents, all we're gonna do is just combine these two together. You always wanna put your cis and trans at the very, very front. And so your final answer is going to be cis dash three dash octene. And once again, the reason why it's dashed uh, is because it's going from letter to number, number to letter, okay? So letters to numbers or numbers to letters, you guys need to separate them using a dash. Okay. So um, that's one quick example. Uh, let's go ahead and, and start looking at a more complicated example. In other words, we're just going to add some substituents. Okay. So let's just say that we have this molecule at this specific orientation. Um, and so the first thing that we're gonna do is count the number of carbons, longest chain, one, two, three, four, and five. Or five, doesn't matter at this point because they're both equivalent. So now that we know that we have five carbons, the parent is going to be pent since I have a double bond, um, it needs to be pentene. Okay, so now that I have uh, my, my parent name, I need to describe where that double bond is located. It's so a very similar to the previous example. I wanna make sure that my double bond has the lowest carbon number. And so the only way that's possible is if I go from left to right. That's not, once again, always the case. Um, it's just been the case for these examples. Now, if you go from right to left, you'll find that you'll get a higher number, right? So if you go from right to left, this is one, two, and then three. So your double bond will start at three if you go from right to left, but if you go from left to right, your double bond starts at two. So two is lower than three, 
and therefore the forward uh, going from left to right <clears throat> is preferred. And so we're going to put two pentene. Okay. And so it looks like we have other substituents. Okay. And so we're going to go ahead and uh, name these substituents. So we have a 4-bromo. And here we have a 4-methyl. And I say four because they're both attached to carbon number four. Now, if you look, they're different substituents, so therefore we need to organize them in alphabetical order. So B comes before M, so four bromo is going to be written first, four methyl will be written second, and then last but not least, this is going to be written third. So let's go ahead and put them together. So this is 4-bromo, then 4-methyl, and then 2-pentene. Okay. Letter to number, dash, letter to number, dash. Okay. All right, and so um, if you guys look at the, the molecule, um, there's one more item that we need to assess, and that's cis and trans. So whenever you guys see a double bond, you have to think of whether or not it's cis or trans, or maybe it's not cis or trans, right? So here, this is going to be a hydrogen. There's going to be hydrogen there. There's going to be an invisible hydrogen here. Okay. If your invisible hydrogens are opposite to each other with respect to the vertical and the horizontal imaginary line. Okay. Then this would be an example of a geometric isomer that's trans. And so trans needs to be written first before your substituent then that would complete the name of this molecule. Okay. And so, you know, what example, what would this look like if it, if it was cis? Okay. So if it was cis, I'm trying to keep everything the same. So this is my BR. Okay. So this is an example where <clears throat> the name would be the same. But the conformation is going to be cis because those hydrogens are on the same side with respect to the horizontal imaginary line. Okay. So here's that imaginary line around the horizontal. They're on the same side. Yet they're still opposite with respect to the vertical line. And I just got to make sure the cis is right next to the dash. And so what would be an example of a molecule in which it's not cis or trans, yet there's still a double bond? So I'm going to go ahead and use the same example. I'm going to erase some stuff. Oops. Oh, well. So this is an example in which there is no cis or trans. Why? Because there's no hydrogens. There's only one hydrogen 
which is over here. Okay. And so this is the reason why comparing the, the hydrogens is, is important. If you have two hydrogens that are on opposite sides of the double bond, then you could potentially have cis or trans. Um, here, if you have only one hydrogen on one side of the double bond, then there is no cis and trans. And the only thing that, that's left to do is just name this compound. Now the name of this compound is going to be different. And so let's go ahead and name it. One, two, three, four, five. Um, so actually, no, it won't be different. Yeah, it will, it will, because I just added a methyl group. Um, and so here in this case, I have uh, still two pentene. And then now I have a whole bunch of substituents to name. This guy, this guy, and this guy. I need to erase this hydrogen um, because remember in the skeletal structure, it's not supposed to be shown. So here, this is 2-methyl. This is going to be 4-methyl. This is going to be 4-bromo. And those are all the substituents. And so since my methyls are the same, I just need to combine them. My, however, my B comes before M. So I, I'm going to go ahead and say 4-bromo. dash two comma four dimethyl okay move this over just a little bit dash two pentene and that would be the name of uh, this compound um, so Please remember, we're not going to talk about E or Z. If you guys come across that in your search for organic chemistry, completely ignore it. Okay. All right. So hopefully through these um, small exercises and through this explanation, you guys understand what geometric isomers are, how they're different to that of constitutional isomers, and how to identify them and uh, will not only identify them, but name them and draw them. All right, that's it for this lecture video. I'll see you guys in the next one.